Welcome to the second week of the course Unit Operations of Particulate Matter. This is the first lecture of week 2 and here we will introduce the concept of filtration. Now this particular uh, topic that is filtration uh, we will cover in three different uh, lectures that is lecture 1, lecture 2 and lecture 3 where we will cover filtration as well as batch filtration. So in first uh, lecture we will uh, define the filtration, we will discuss the principles of filtration and then we will cover the steps involved in filtration and different types of filtration. In second lecture of uh, this session we will uh, describe the governing equation which are used to design the filtration equipment filtration unit and in third lecture of this session we will discuss the examples so that uh, uh, the concept of filtration and the calculation etc for design of filtration unit can be illustrated. So let us start with the first lecture of uh, week 2 which is on filtration. Now what is the purpose and motivation of this lecture is the purpose is to provide the basic technical information on filters and filter media. So, the purpose is to uh, we will define the filtration, we will discuss about the filters and filter media. Now what is the motivation behind it? The filtration if we consider filtration process we use in our day to day life whether we are aware this uh, uh, aware with it or not, but uh, we use it and how we will uh, translate the concept of filtration which we use in our day to day life to the industrial scale that will be the motivation of this particular lecture. So what is filtration? If you see this particular uh, figure what this uh, uh, image shows that here we have the filter media if you consider and uh, we have the uh, solution over there the solution is continuously uh, coming over here. But the particle which are uh, available in the solution if they their size uh, is greater than the pores of the media the solid will be deposited or it will not be uh, filtered from this it will not be penetrated uh, through this however the particle uh, which are lesser than they can penetrate so that speaks about the concept of filtration now what is filtration is filtration can be defined as the removal of solid particles from a fluid by passing the fluid through a filtering media on which solids are deposited. So we have to uh, uh, filter the slurry so that solid which is available in this that, that should be deposited on the filter media and liquid which is available that should pass through the media. So that is basically the filtration. So filtration is very much a part of our daily life even if we are not aware of them. Now to give an example of this when we uh, carry out when uh, in our day to day life what we do uh, I can um, say this that many of us have at least uh, uh, strain the tea which we prepare for us. So that is nothing but the filtration process what we take what we do in that we take the strainer and then we pass the um, tea through this. So the uh, tea leaves uh, which are available in the tea that will be uh, collected in the strainer and rest of the liquid will be passed through it. So that is nothing but the filtration itself. So similarly in many other day to day activity we use filtration but uh, whether we are aware this or not but we use the filtration. But the purpose of this lecture is how we will use this technique to design the process. Further as we all have uh, gone through the labs in school chemistry labs in school so we all have used the filtration process. Uh, if you consider this image uh, here we have the test tube and uh, over this test tube we put the funnel and inside the funnel we have the filter paper then the mixture will be entered into this so that the uh, unwanted part or the solid which is available in the mixture that will be collected in the filter and liquid is passed through this. So in lab also we have used the concept of filtration but obviously at very um, low scale. So in laboratory the suspension is poured into the conical funnel fitted with a filter paper. 
Now, if we want to translate this concept to industrial purpose, in a industrial equivalent, difficulties are encountered in the mechanical handling of much larger quantities of suspension and solids. A thicker layer of solids has to form and in order to achieve high rate of passage of liquid through the solids, higher pressure are needed and a far greater area has to be provided. So, you see in lab scale in our day to day life we use filtration at very low scale. However, at industrial scale a significantly large area is required and because of that uh, media it after uh, some time uh, the um, due to the uh, accumulation of solid uh, over the filter media the liquid will not pass through. So, for that uh, purpose we have to uh, increase the pressure so that it should so that liquid should pass through the media. So, all these complexities we have to consider in designing of filtration system for industrial process or industrial purpose. So, here we have in this slide the principle of filtration. Now, what is the pr principle of filtration? First of all, we should uh, see what are the different uh, component uh, in filtration uh, uh, system we have to consider and these components are first of all we have to take the filter media through which slurry should pass and then that filter media should be stayed over some uh, uh, what I say uh, some support like if we consider the example of funnel also like in the previous slide we have discussed. So, the funnel and inside this we put the filter media. So, that funnel uh, works as a support to the filter media. In the similar line and in industry also below the filter media we provide some support so that it should be stayed over there and over the filter media we pass the slurry after some time. Uh, of the operation what happens the filter uh, the solid available in the slurry that pass that is deposited on the filter media and prepare a thick cake which we call as the cake of solid available in the slurry and uh, due to formation of due to accumulation of solid over the filter media liquid can be passed through that. So, we can have very clear liquid as filtrate. So, what is the uh, cons uh, what is the principle over here that we have to take the filter media we have to take support to the filter media and then slurry should pass through the filter media. So, we can collect the uh, solid in terms of cake, we can collect the uh, clear water or clear solvent in terms of filtrate. So, since the filter media is permeable only to the liquid, only to the fluid, it retains the solid particles and permits only the fluid to pass through which is collected as the filtrate. The volume of filtrate collected per unit time is dv by dt is termed as the rate of filtration. So, how we have defined the rate of filtration? The volume collected per unit time and this dv by dt we will use to design the we will use to derive the governing equations also. So, as filtration proceeds solid particles accumulate on the filter media forming a pegged bed of the solid and we call this as a filter cake. So, what happens first uh, we take the media slurry is passed through it and after some time the thick layer of solid will be formed over the media that we call as the cake. So, uh, what we can understand over here that as the thickness of this cake increases, uh, you can understand when we have the formation of uh, solid over the filter media, what happens? It will offer a resistance to for a liquid to pass through the media. So, as the thickness of cake increases, resistance to flow of filtrate increases rate of filtration gradually decreases. Now, here uh, due to increased thickness of uh, cake over the filter media, the filtrate which is collected over uh, collected through it that will be decreased after some that will start decreasing after some time because of the resistance which is offered due to the formation of cake. So, if rate is maintained to be constant then pressure difference driving force will increase. So, what we have to do over here that 
Due to the formation of thick layer over the filter media, the filtrate volume collected per unit time will keep on decreasing. If you want to maintain same uh, rate of filtration, uh, that is volume collected per unit time should be same. So, we have to increase the pressure drop across the filter media or across the uh, filter media as well as cake. So, therefore, the batch filter is operated either by constant pressure or at constant rate. So, as far as its uh, principle is concerned, we either go for the constant pressure process or we can go for the constant rate process. Now, what happens when we consider these two? So, that can be illustrated with this uh, figure where uh, at y axis we have pressure as well as uh, q that is volume collected and here we have the time. So, as time proceeds, if we want to maintain the flow rate constant, maintain the flow rate of filtrate constant, then continuously we have to increase the pressure. Pressure will keep on increasing, so we will uh, collect the constant volume of the filtrate. And uh, when the pressure will be reached to the um, permissible value after that the pressure should not be increased because of the operational difficulty. So, at after that pressure will remain constant and once we keep the pressure constant the volume of filtrate collected per unit time will keep on decreasing. So, what we have to do first of all we have to increase the pressure to constant the rate of filtration and then we have to uh, go for the constant pressure so that uh, filtrate volume will keep on or rate of filtration will keep on decreasing. So, to get the maximum output first of all we have to operate at constant rate and then we should proceed with constant pressure. Now, what happens when we consider uh, vice versa of this like if we uh, maintain the pressure constant and uh, slurry and uh, uh, filtrate uh, Rate, rate of filtration will keep on decreasing. So, you can see this section of this uh, of the image appears first and after that when we increase the pressure the filtrate can be constant. So, you can see the filtrate can be constant at this level. So, obviously the uh, filtrate which has to be collected its volume will be decreased its uh, rate will be decreased significantly. So, for uh, maximum output we have to operate with constant rate and then with constant pressure. Important factors which affect the rate of filtration are the pressure drop across the filter media obviously because uh, we have to uh, maintain the rate of uh, filtration. So, pressure drop is an important factor across the media. Secondly, area of filtering surface when we increase the area we can handle more and more uh, slurry at one time, but at the same time we should take care of the filter media because accordingly we have to use larger filter media and the larger system which will be difficult to handle. So, but area of filter filtering surface is an important factor. Another factor is the viscosity of the filtrate. It has to be uh, not so much viscous so that um, the penetration of liquid should be uh, easier. So, its uh, viscosity should not be much. So, but uh, viscosity affects the filtration process. Next is resistance of the filter cake. The filter cake resistance can be offered by the thickness of the cake. So, we should take care that after some time this these cake should be removed. Uh, so, the thickness of these cake will uh, give the resistance and that will be the factor for designing of filtration system. Finally, the resistance of the filter media and initial layers of the cake. Now, initial layer of uh, when the slurry contact the filter media, what happens initially a layer is formed. So, that layer works also as the resistance uh, also as a filter media because it uh, uh, stops, uh, it blocks other uh, particles to uh, or it blocks liquid to pass through this. So, that will also work as a filter media. So, resistance will be offered by the initial layer, filter media as well as total thickness of the cake. So, here we will discuss different steps which are involved in filtration process. You see first is the filtration where slurry uh, is uh, in contact with the media, filtration takes place and uh, after that we have 
second step is draining the liquor the filtration which is uh, filtrate which is uh, formed that we have to drain from the system then further the system should be filled with the wash water because whatever cake is formed over the filter media that we should wash with the clear water or uh, this clear water we also call as wash water so third step is filling the system with wash water then washing takes place in the similar line as the filtration takes place washing also takes place in the same uh, following same method that uh, instead of slurry clear water should pass through the um, sh clear water should pass through the cake so that it can wash the cake next step is draining the wash water and finally we have to open dump and reassemble the whole system so these are the steps involved in batch process uh, for filtration purpose and then uh, after dumping after reassembling again we fill with the slurry so you see filtration draining liquor filling with wash water washing draining the wash water opening dumping and reassembling this is one cycle of filtration now if we consider uh, the example from our day to day life many of us many of us used to prepare the cheese at our houses so how we prepare this first we have the curdling milk then uh, we uh, strain with the media that that is very fine cloth and uh, through this uh, we pass through the uh, whole uh, uh, mixer mixture so what the lump of the lump inside the mixer that will be collected in the uh, media and liquid pass through this okay so that will be the uh, that will be the step that will be a few step of the filtration that is filtering and then draining the liquor now what we do we uh, then uh, um, wash the lump which is collected over the uh, over the cloth so we again fill this with, with water uh, clear water the water passes through this uh, through the lump and then we again uh, uh, we uh, keep that uh, lump uh, one side and press with some uh, heavy uh, weight so that it has the proper uh, shape and whatever drainage whatever uh, wash uh, wash water we have used that we have already uh, discharge so you see all these steps are involved when we do the filtration process in our houses also so what happens here for we have to uh, the cake is formed we have to wash the cake then all this will be all uh, the cake will have to uh, we we have to discharge all the cake so that it will the uh, system will be uh, reassembled for the next cycle now what happens by some means if continuously we remove this cake because the cake is the main hurdle in the process so if continuously we remove the cake the the filtration process can be translated into the continuous system from batch system now uh, we have already seen the steps involved in filtration now we will see different types of filtration the very common filtration is the cake filtration now if you see what happens in cake filtration the particles from the suspension which usually have high proportion of solids are deposited on the surface of a porous septum that is the filter media which should ideally offer only small resistance to flow now initially it has very less resistance because that passes through the filter media so resistance is very less now what happens after some time the la solid layer will be formed over here that offers major resistance to the uh, major resistance uh, for liquid to pass so as solids build up on the septum the initial layer form the effective filter medium preventing the particles from embedding themselves in the filter cloth and ensuring that particle free filtrate should be obtained 
So, what happens that uh, uh, formation of in layer of solid it stops others uh, particle of solid to um, pass through this and therefore, we can get the clear liquid, but because of this what happens the solid will be deposited continuously on the filter media and therefore, the cake formation uh, takes place. Therefore, this complete process is called uh, this complete filtration is called as cake filtration. Another filtration we have is depth or deep bed filtration. What happens over here? The particles penetrate through the pores of the filter medium where impacts between the particles and surface of the medium are largely responsible for their removal and retention. This configuration is commonly used for removal of fine particle from very dilute suspension where the recovery of particle is not of primary importance. So, when slurry is very dilute particle which are available in slurry is of very fine size then we go for this and what happens the pa these particle penetrate through the media these particle entered through the media but it cannot be penetrated through this liquid will pass through this. So, after uh, in that case as solid is entered into the media this uh, takes place uh, this type of filtration is required when solid recovery of solid is not the aim only getting clear liquid is the aim. So, in such type of filtration what happens filter bed gradually becomes clogged with particles and its resistance to flow eventually reaches an unacceptably high level. So, you see because particle enters into the filter media it will not allow a liquid uh, to pass through this. So, after some time uh, because of clogging uh, this complete system we have to stop because further penetration of liquid is not possible. So, that is the main disadvantage of this. Now, to overcome this problem of uh, clogging it is necessary to remove the accumulated solids and we this can be done very easily. Now, how it can be done very how it can be done easily is the filter coming filter commonly consists of bed of particulate solids. So, instead of cloth or very uh, fine filter media uh, if we can uh, keep the sand bed or uh, the bed of particulate solid if that bed of particulate solid works as the filter media. So, what happened fine particle will be uh, accumulated inside the inside the particulate solid bed and filter will pa filtrate will pass through this. Now, the uh, this particulate solid and the fine particle deposited over here that can be recovered by back flushing process. So, we can use sand bed or uh, uh, particulate other particulate uh, solid bed to carry out this deep bed filtration. Now, here we have the filter media requirement. So, what uh, quality we should see as far as filter media is concerned and these are the filter media should retain solids to be filtered. So, filter media has to retain the solid that is first requirement. Second, give a reasonably clean filtrate it should uh, stop it should uh, block the sol uh, solid particle to pass or retain the solid particle and filtrate should be very clear filtrate we should get. So, does not plug or blind the filter media should be like that like uh, its pore should be like that the solid will deposit it over here it should not penetrate though very fine particle penetrate penetrates, but we should take care the filter media we should select in such a way so that particle should not penetrate and should not clog the filter media. Filter media should be chemically and physically resistant to the process condition. So, what happens uh, it should uh, whatever slurry we are using the filter media material should not react with this. So, the filter media material should be chemically and physically resistant to the process. It should permit cake to be discharged cleanly and completely. 
yes that is a prime uh, very important factor and it should not be too expensive that is again the economy will involve over here so based on all these points we should select the filter media now the common type of filter media are shown in this slide if you see this image here we have the here we have different types of filter media that is if we consider this one that is twill weave then this is the satin weave and uh, sim, uh, similarly we use double layer weave also for the filter media and filter media uh, some images you can see over here these uh, it gives the idea of that uh, filter media so that filter media is basically the um, weaved stuff uh, of uh, cloth weaved cloth so that and very thick uh, uh, Mm, cloth is there so that we put as that we use as a filter media so these are different types of media and usually woven materials made of cotton wool silk nylon polyester and glass fibers and metal wires are most commonly used as filter media bed of granular solids such as sand are also used when highly corrosive sludge is handled so you see there are different type of filter media not only cloth but sand we can also use as a filter media here we are stopping the first lecture of this session in the next session we will discuss about the governing equation which are involved in filtration process so that's all for now thank you